Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my March page for the Canvas Court Brands Creative Crew Traveling Art Journal. This journal came to me in the mail. I'm doing a page and then I'm going to mail it on to the next person. So the first thing that I did was to protect the journal by adding masking tape down the center so that nothing would bleed through and also putting white gesso over the pages and then I um, also inserted deli paper on either side of the page in order to protect the pages on either side you know it, it doesn't work perfectly but <laughs> you do your best then I use some modeling paste through a stencil this is a honeycomb stencil by Heidi Swap and that is the deco art brand modeling paste I wanted to add this honeycomb and make it dimensional so that's why I'm using the modeling paste so that it sticks up a little bit and has cracks and crevices that I can hopefully put color into when I do the next steps. So I'm using a metal palette knife to apply it and just kind of scraping it over and then I'll also use the palette knife to clean it up clean up any places that I don't want there to be modeling paste later around the edges and things like that it's also nice to not let it go to waste the excess by scraping it off where you don't want it and putting it back in the box though well it's not really a box is it it's a tub <laughs> so I'm gonna set that aside to dry um, I do end up finishing up the drying with a heat tool because it just takes too long. It just takes too long. People, they need to make it dry faster. But I didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> so once it was all dry, I started putting some some sprays on. These are the Tattered Angels Baseboard Mist. Remember this is a Canvas Court Brands project which is Tattered Angels, Seven Gypsies, Canvas Court Brands, Home Basics. Those are the umbrella companies plus they also make stuff for a lot of other companies as well. Um, but these baseboard mists are my preferred ones these days. They don't have any mica in them so they're not shimmery and they're also kind of opaque they're they've got something in them that makes them makes the colors be more opaque rather than translucent ultimately they are a type of a watercolor inside a spray bottle so that's basically how you use them um, they can be diluted with water you can mix the colors if you want to, you can use a brush, you can use the spray, you know, they're, they're watercolors. So I'm just adding different colors as I go. Um, and then you see I have a little mini mister there. Uh, it doesn't come out red, it's just stained that color. <laughs> and I'm spraying that, I'm splattering on a little bit of this cardboard brown and then, then um, misting it and letting it go down in the cracks. And then I set that aside to dry and actually this is a little bit of out, of out of order because I started cutting out my things and then I put them aside and then cut them out some more. But these are different images from a couple different uh, of the one printed side ivory card stocks that have prints on them. And of course they will be listed below as to which ones it, was, it is. It's birds and bees and garden sayings I think. And I cut different bits and bobs out of them to collage onto my page. I wanted kind of a spring page of course this is March so it's it's you know supposed to be a little bit springy but I wanted to um, feature the bees and so I cut out a couple different well several different bees but two large ones and a few little small ones and then the bee skep or honeycomb thing you know the bee hive or whatever you want a few little words and then from the other page this bees please and grow strong and my message was you know the, the bees the honeybees are kind of dying out there some of them are becoming extinct so we really want to pay attention to um, 
you know, keeping those things alive because they do pollinate everything for us. So I'm just auditioning all my different pieces, trying to figure out where I'm going to put things on the page. And I was thinking about using this architecture's um, fence. I thought maybe it could be like, kind of like a garden gate, but I ended up not using it. I didn't think it looked right with the rest of the things. So I decide I'm instead I'm going to have like a green grassy area across the bottom of the page. So I'm using some, I think that the name of that one is Vine Mist, and then some leaf, which is this bright green, and a paintbrush, and I'm going to paint the grass using this fine round paintbrush. I just, I, I don't want to pour the mist out of the bottle because every time I do that I get way 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 too much out I just pour this huge puddle of it and then it just goes to waste so I just have been taking the little tube out and tapping it onto a piece of deli paper and that gives me just a few drops and if I need some more then I just tap it again until I have enough and that way I'm not wasting any of course you could put a weld palette and just you know put all the colors into each little well and let them dry and then reconstitute them with water just like a watercolor that would work fine but I just prefer to keep them in the bottles so then I'm using the next color which is iris and it's a lavender purple and I'm making some little flowers um, something that would attract bees and help them get some pollen to go pollinate some other stuff so these are the easiest type of flowers to make. They're kind of a, a conical, multi-petaled something or other. I don't really know. <laughs> Probably some type of a weed. I don't know. <laughs> but easy to make. Just dab, 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 dab. Make a, a cone shape. So then once that's all dry, I decide it's time to collage on all my pieces. Still trying to figure out where I want them. Where do I want stuff? I don't know. I don't know. I think I decide finally that I am going to put this saying down in the lower right. And of course the beehive has to be on the bottom because it wouldn't be floating. So then that ends up making the two big bees be at the top, which I don't love. Um, but that's the way I thought that it, it balanced out the best. Because the other bee wouldn't be down at the bottom unless, well, I guess it could be. I don't know. Anyway, I went back and forth and back and forth, and I think I finally figured out this is how I was going to do it. So I'm using some gel matte medium, and right there I wipe off. See, this this is the, the problem with using water-soluble stuff. I was trying to clean up where I had oozed out too much of the gel under from underneath and I wiped it with a baby wipe and wiped the uh, water soluble paint off. So I'm going to have to fix that. <laughs> but I'm just trying to apply it only to the backs of the pieces and these are cardstock. These are not a lightweight um, paper so it makes them a little bit harder to stick down. But it's a nice weight paper. It's just that just when you're trying to collage with them, that's a little bit more tricky because they're heavier. And I'm just sticking all the different pieces down, buttering them on the back with the gel, and then sticking them down and pressing them down with uh, either my uh, discarded little card over here or the plastic uh, palette knife, or in some cases I'm pressing them down with a half-dry baby wipe. Just had to remember not to wipe with it, just press, but not wipe because that wipes off my color. So I just keep doing it until everything that I wanted on there is on. It's a pretty simple process. I probably could have sped this up even faster. But oh well. <laughs> It's too late now. Just making sure they're good and stuck down. And then I'm going to dry it all with my heat tool to make it faster.
so once all that's dry then I'm gonna start adding more color just in the case of pretty much any mixed media project or any watercolor project you're constantly layering you're putting more and more and more layers until you're satisfied and in order to get a really intense watercolor you do have to put lots and lots of layers on top so I'm adding more of this green and also that fills in that area where I kind of wiped off over here by the the beehive and um, I'm just doing it with the inside plastic of the squirt bottle this time I didn't even get out the brush and I'm adding more flowers because this one area down in the middle um, seems kind of bare and I didn't really have another bee to put down there that was the right size so I'm just doing it with some more to add in some more flowers and make it appear more like it's you know got flowers in the front flowers in the back like more depth then I add some more of the blue spray I'm trying to to uh, get it to spray correctly at least it's spraying but it's not spraying correctly it's just only coming out on one side um, I don't know maybe I'll soak it or something adding some more blue um, adding a little bit more of this ivory color and then some more of the cardboard to get uh, more brown onto the the honeycomb areas and then I'm using my brush and water coloring over with that brown um, onto the beehive I think they're brown I've seen them before and I, re I really can't remember exactly what color they are I don't see them very often um, so I'm using that same brown color it's called cardboard I'm not sure it's really the color of cardboard it's a little bit darker than that and then just uh, adding some of the sunburst yellow and some of the sky color and different colors around using a brush and just dabbing it onto my little piece of deli paper and then using the brush to apply it got to get some yellow on those bees and then of course their wings white is never white it's a it's a shade of something and so I'm using the light blue to shade their wings and then on my little tag I'm gonna use um, the blue in the background and color in the beehive on it and the grass on it as well so that it stands out more these sprays really do work well as watercolors they're nice and intense because these are the more opaque colors so they're maybe a little bit more like a um, a gouache than a watercolor but they do thin down a lot if you put any if your brush is wet or if you put any type of water onto them so it's a pretty fun little process to work with them then once everything is dry I take out all my protection and I trim and everything and then I'm gonna add a border around the edge of the page using some archival ink this is potting soil color which is a brown um, just you know scratching it around the edge of the pages to to add a darker border around the edge then of course white Posca pen adding some highlights onto my little conical shaped flowers and um, really just scribbly loose very you know nothing fussy nothing fussy at all just adding a little bit of extra detail and also some highlights onto my little beehive and hmm, I can't remember if I put any any other places not sure oh I guess onto the little tag a little bit and then my final thing you know I've, I've fussy cut all these pieces out and so no matter how carefully I cut them there's always still some white left especially because these are fine line drawings and I I want to leave the fine line fuzzy details you know the fuzzy bee bits I don't want to cut that stuff off so what I'm doing is using a pit pen this is a um, India ink inside of a marker these are the Fabricastel pit pens I uh, picked one that was a little bit darker than the sky color and I'm just going around and filling in that white area where there's you know a little bit of white 
scraggly bits where I didn't cut too close and also that adds a halo around everything and actually kind of helps it to blend into the page and not look like it's so much of a stuck on thing so I do that and I also use a taupe color as well if you've enjoyed this video please remember to give it a thumbs up um, leave me a comment subscribe share if you want to and of course don't forget to go over to the CC, C, CCV blog and look at everyone else's pages that's it for me thanks bye bye